and welcome to the Business Spotlight. Today, you're gonna enjoy my guest. She's been on before, her name is Cassandra Vitaka. She's a bit of a, I'll call it a wealth coach, but it's so much more than that. Uh, she'd call herself a fitness financial professional or something like that. Cassandra, thanks for being on the show again. Yeah, glad to be here. I want to get in some, the, this session or this, this show is going to be a little different because we really want you to share some of the, the insights, the inside story of not only why you do what you do, sure. but what you do yeah. <laughs> to uh, an audience learning. And potentially, I know that uh, prospects will probably see this afterwards. We'll send it out to them and, and that sort of thing. So um, I know you're a Stanford grad. This has changed your life. You have the floor. Okay. Well, great. Well, um, I think the best way to start maybe a little bit is sort of frame this for people. Sure. So obviously I operate in the world of financial services, mm -hmm. you know, so there's that, for most folks, that world is the world of insurance, sort of those protected assets, um, Risk life insurance. management type yeah, stuff. Well, you know, actual life insurance and long-term care and disability. So people know those words and have those types of products. And then there's the world of really what I call um, qualified plan world, which is really your mutual funds, your IRAs, your SEPs, your SIMPLES, 529s, UTMAs, UGMAs. These are terms that people have heard. These are products people have within their family economy, sure. right? Businesses have these types of assets underneath their belt. So I operate in that space, but that's where the similarities really kind of end. Right. Um, those are the, the product base that I work with, but it's, it's really just a product. And the, the example that I give for folks is, um, do you play golf? Me? Yeah. No, all I've ever gonna, had a golf is a blister. Okay, okay. So, so, but, but you know golf, right? You know I know there are people that, are, yeah. the, the, there are people like me that really suck at it, and then there's others that are good. Yeah, so um, you and I could play together because we just laugh the whole yeah, time, right? Because right. yeah. um, we don't know what the heck we're doing, right? Like, what, is, what number is that? Pick out some number. But think about <laughs> Can it. Can I drop the ball yeah, yet? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, mulligans, what do we get, right? Right, right. how many? So, <laughs> the, the golf bag represents you need, in order to play the game of golf, you need those clubs. You know, you right. have your putter and your driver and you have the irons, and they mean something at different points in the, the game, right? So if you give someone like us this customized golf bag, right, with these right. beautiful, that are designed for our bodies and our, how, what, right, like I, yeah, what does it matter to us? We don't really, know the difference, right? Because we do not know how to play the game. Correct. You give us a golf coach, you give us an instructor. Right. First of all, it doesn't matter what customized clubs I have. You give me that coach, I'll be fine even with a non-customized set of clubs, right. right? Yeah, much better than otherwise. Yes. Now, when I get good, when I'm really good and I'm great and I'm competitive, I want a customized set. Do I not? Right, right, right. So that's the analogy I give for folks. I am the swing coach. Right. I teach people, you got to have the right clubs. That's part of my job, to figure out what clubs you have in your bag, right? What, and, and some of these assets I personally manage for you, but a ton of them I won't. I don't manage your business. Your business is one of those clubs. I don't manage your real estate ventures. That might be, might be one of those clubs. Right. There are a lot of things I, won't, I don't particularly have my hand in. My job is though to teach you how to continually play that game well because you're gonna continue adding. There's gonna be different courses you're moving on. So the analogy continues. I stay with somebody the whole way through. And in particular, it's driven by a desire that I have, my real objective, my big agenda. Right. I don't want to just help you. Right. I want to help the people you care about, your children, your children's children. Right. Because, no, because, because so much of what I've seen you do is set families up for, you know, it might end up being transgenerational. It might be some of these but there's a whole different agenda than just getting you to a certain spot down the road. You're looking at a three to 400 year plan is what I'm, am, am I correct yes. in reading that way? Absolutely, absolutely. It is absolutely about, this is a statement I make people all the time. My job is not to tell you what to spend your money on, right. who to give it to, uh, what to do with it. My job is to show you how to manage your money, where to put it, how to grow it, more efficiently and effectively so that you can bless whoever the heck you want to bless. Um, so that your money, if you, and, and, and those dollars can go move on to whomever else you choose to have them move on to. And so here's part of, and I'm gonna, we're actually gonna look at some, there's gonna be some visuals that we look at. So I wanna kinda get into that a little bit. Yeah, sure, because the, the one thing I do wanna make sure is that people understand that, that so much of what you're doing is, is it's, a, it's a bit of a rewrite on the way that we've learned financial planning in the past. 
And, and so as we get into this, that's one of the things I'm really excited about is seeing the rest of the story yeah. because it's not about the bits and pieces. It's not about a single swing or a single putter or a single driver. It's about a, a, a plan that lasts way beyond yeah. your own family or your own giving or those type of things. Yes. So here's, and, and this is the, uh, I, I've made, I make the statement to everybody, it is a fundamental statement that if you don't believe this, if it doesn't resonate with you, I probably can't help you. Right. And it's a statement of this. So there is, and I, I made this probably on the, even the last time we spoke, there is more money that flows into you and away from you than you could ever possibly save and invest. Right. Does that make sense? Well, if, and let me make sure I'm understanding that correctly, uh, personally, is that the, the money that I uh, get paid to me in any capacity, I will spend that or my family will spend that, push it away from us yes. in uh, whatever, everything we spend money on. Yeah. And, and the thing we just don't get is that there's an alternative to that equation. Yes. Is that what you're trying yes. to get out? Because it's, because you're going to spend the money. You right. have to pay your mortgage. You have to pay your health care premiums. You've got to give Uncle Sam his tax money every year, whether you right. want to or not, right? Right. IRS, KGB, whatever. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you, want to send, you want to send your kids to school, maybe. You want to go on these family vacations. These aren't right. needs. They're not needs. They're wants, right? Right. And if you think about the majority of your life, it's want. Right. I'm in the wants business. I'll be straight up. I'm so in the wants So you're helping business. people get what they want. Want. Because what you need, we need a, a garbage pail, a bridge, and a burlap bag, right? Well, I mean, that's one way to live. <laughs> exactly. So life is about lifestyle and choices. Right. So my job is to meet somebody where they are in their lifestyle and, and get them what they want. And the problem is it's hard to get what you want because there's a fundamental truth about your money. It's always leaving you. So there's this image that we're going to look at that talks about the true cost of paying cash. Okay. We're all told, and, and it's a good thing to pay cash, but this, what we're looking at here is a representation of what happens to money when you spend it. So it's a, you're looking at a $5,000 contribution that go, you know, and for five years, you're accumulating this $5,000 because you have some $25,000 spend. And you see that very first little red blip, you know, that, because every year you're saving 5,000. And we're having, we're, we're saying it has some 5% net rate of return, which would be really nice if your money net after fees and taxes sure. would get that for you. Wouldn't yeah. that be great? In some liquid repository. Your checking account. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, it'd be, That'd be great, right? <laughs> only 500% more yeah. than what it is yeah. now. <laughs> but, but even if in your checking account, because this is what this is talking about, I'm saving, 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 saving. So I, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. I'm not going into debt. You know, um, I'm doing what Dave Ramsey says. You know, right. I appreciate Dan Ramsey helping the $10 an hour person. But if you're making more than $10 an hour, he's not your guy. Okay. okay? He's not designed for people that actually have you know, healthier incomes. Right. He's designed for people who barely can make it. That's really what he's designed for. But, but you're, when you're saying healthier incomes, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, 100 to 250, yeah. you're not talking uber wealth, million dollars a year. Two school teachers. Two, Two school, school te teachers in Dallas will make $100,000 a year. Right. You know, one school teacher, $50,000 a year. Right. I mean, honestly, I'm talking about hardworking, quality professionals. Whether and that's who you're trying to that's reach. That's who I talk to. Okay. My okay. families are these families. Might be one income earner, might be two. They're making, as a household, you know, 80 to 100 to half a million. And I have some making more, okay? Oh, sure. But these, this is my bulk of my folks are good, hardworking citizenry. What happens is, as all of us are in the same boat, whether we're making, you know, the $10 an hour or the $1,000 an hour, we're all in the same boat. We all are saving this money. And so, again, that image was, I'm saving 5000 a year because at some point I want 25000 so I can either go buy the car outright or pay for that year of education outright or go on that really fancy vacation. That 25000 is going to, or i got to pay the government 25000 I mean, think about how much you pay in taxes. Pay I get a lot it. of money, right? Right. When you take the $25,000 out of operation, what you've effectively done, and this is represented, you see a green curve, you effectively shift your wealth curve to the right and you give up growth. What you see, and you see, if, if, if you didn't have to spend the money, over 30 years, your $5,000 savings a year for that period of time would have been $353,000. Nice, right? Nice. But you've got to spend the money. You're going right. to take the money out of operation, and you're going to spend it and service your wants and needs. You give up. That one $25,000 transfer, again, you're going to spend the money, is really, it cost you about $100,000. Because you're saying over that time period that followed where you gave it up, 
that's where it's costing you so much more. You gave up the potential growth. It's Correct. your wealth potential you give away, right? So when you think about this, when you examine, when you really look at life, right, you're going to spend this 25000 every five years. You're if you were to buy a car or if you were buy to make a car, big car go purchase. on vacation, pay the tax man, pay a health care premium. You know, uncle, you know, mother got sick and needed help. Right. Life happens. So now you look at these transactions over time. And so you see that every now we're looking at a series of transactions that occur. So now instead of just one transaction, we have a series of transactions. So there's another image here showing that every five years I take. 5000 a year, I save 25000 I take it out of operation and pay for something. Then I got to refill the bucket, and I right. save again, and then I take it out of operation. Every time I do that, you have a lifetime of giving away 25000 every five years. The difference shown is almost $350,000 over 30 years. You give up that growth. Does right. that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. It does. That's what I'm talking about. My job is to help people get some of this $350,000 back. Because right. let's not talk investment first. I'm saddened by the number of people who don't know the difference between the word investment and savings. Right. And in fact, um, most people think they're saving because they have their money in a 401k. Right. Well, I mean, that makes sense. They, they, they think it, they're not seeing it, so it's being peeled off. Is they there anything to... contractually guaranteed about a qualified plan like a 401k? You mean, it, can you lose the money? Yes. Well, it's been done too many times to count. So it's not safe. No. It, it could be zero. Used to be, used to be, but when, Contractually you know, never was, though. Contractually, it never said you could you get a dime of this. Right. That's not, that's not a savings plan. That's an investment. Right. Pretty you know, risky, and now in today's world. All anything that is not contractually guaranteed is not safe money. Right. So th there's a difference between safe money and investments. Most people do not have a platform for safe money. They don't have a platform for purchases, but right. yet they want to go and knock it out of the park on investments. How, how can I get 10, 20, 30% rate of return, Cassandra? Well, if you're going to take a massive risk, but right. you have to save the money first. I mean, that slide I showed with the 25,000 every five years, those could have all been investments. Right. They could have been a purchase, because an investment is first and foremost a purchase. Taxes, charities, investments, healthcare premiums, mortgages, educations, they're all purchases. Right. You have to save the money before you make the purchase. But, you're, but the things that you teach actually transform that to where everything basically goes in and out. It's kind of like a, you know, a, something like, I want to say like high tide. I mean, it's that it, it expands and then it's a, you're able to pull money out, put money back in and in, in and out, right? Yes, we'll see some visuals. We're going we're gonna to do that right now. Okay. So, so how does it work? So because, again, we know that over time, I'm giving away my wealth potential. My right. job is to help people understand that you're purchasing, you don't have a purchasing strategy. You're hoping to knock it out of the park with your investment strategy, which is a very tiny sum of your money. I'm trying to help you realize that every dollar, regardless of you, what you call it, can realize contractually guaranteed growth. Well, go to the slide. Okay, Let's so see what we're talking here's, about. here's what this is gonna look like. And, 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 and this, is, this is some language that I use. It's the whole idea that you have to consider the opportunity cost. When you purchase things and you pay cash, it's a lost opportunity cost. Because it's not what you're paying for, it's how you're paying for it. Okay? That's very important. It's about purchasing, right? So this is how it's going to work. Um, but I don't, wanna, I don't want you to, we're going to do a little game first. And we'll just, we'll just get into it. You're going to, um, I'm your banker. Okay. And you're going to come to me to get some $25,000 investment, right? Some purchase. I'm sorry, you right. make a purchase. And so I have your money because you've been putting it in my bank. So you come to me to get your $25,000 and you say, hey, Cassandra, I need my money. Now I'm ready to go buy whatever I'm buying. And I sure. say, great, Patrick, that's, that's awesome, but I don't want you to take the money out of the bank. I want you to leave it at the bank and I'm going to credit you 4% on your money. Okay? Okay. I know you need the money because you're ready to get the money. I'm going to give you the bank's money. I'm going to leave your money in a, an account over here earning 4%. I'm going to give you the bank's money. It's a loan but it's a non-traditional, non-structured loan, meaning you can pay me back when you're ready to pay me back. I'm gonna charge you 6%. My money, you gotta pay me to have my money, but I'm not gonna bug you every month for it, so you can pay me whenever you're ready. Right. Once a year, I'm gonna remind you that you owe me 6%, I'm gonna charge you your 6%, right? Okay. 
So you kind of think this through and you realize, well, it took you five years to save up the 25, and you know that you're going to make these $25,000 purchases every five years anyway, so you're going to put yourself on a five-year schedule just because you choose to. Because you realize at the end of five years, you will have more money in your 4% account than you've paid me at 6%. Do you believe me? I do because I understand the math. But I also realize that for a lot of people, they're oh, losing 2%. And I go, well, wait a minute. Exactly. See, there's more to it. So this is what we're going to So here's your loan, right? You put your $25,000 into the bank, right? So, and, and I charge you 6%. That's what I said I was going to do. Here's a five-year time frame, right? So we can see this. And, you know, it has a monthly payment because you choose to pay back because, again, right. if you were going to have another $25,000 purchase, you have You'd to be put money back, back in, right? That's right. So this, you your $500 or $600 a month. You'd exactly, be paying it back. Exactly, because you have to replenish your bucket. Right. In this replenishing of the bucket, you give a banker $4,000, 3999 4000 right? So you choose to give away money. So as you're replenishing your $25,000, you give a banker $4,000, which is right. why you didn't want to take the loan. You're like, why right. would I have given you $4,000? I already had the money. Here's why. When you put your money in the bank with me, and now we see this next visual, your $25,000 earning 4% after five years, because we didn't touch your money, you earned 5,500 bucks, you paid me the banker 4,000. You have more money in your account than you've paid me. Do you know why this is occurring? I, I, I think I know, but it, it has something to do with the interest going in and interest coming out and whether it's compound or if it's, if it's like daily accrued or something. So it, It's all those terms that we hear a lot of, but we don't really understand. Yeah, and it's here, as clear as mud. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's, there, it's an economic statement. It's an economic principle. And here's the economic principle, and then we'll talk about it a little more. It is virtually impossible for an amortized loan, which is finite and zeroes out, it's, in this scenario, it's a $4,000 finite number, and it's zero at the end. It's virtually impossible for an amortized loan ever to exceed compounding interest, which never ends. Oh, okay. Remember the visual where we were saving money? You don't want to get yourself off your economic wealth curve, but you keep disrupting your curve because you keep pulling the money out of operation. In this situation, your money is never out of operation. It's continuing it's to grow. To, so think about it. At the end of five years, you have over $30,000 in your bucket. Right. You have your initial twenty-five thousand because you got to replenish your twenty-five, mm -hmm. and you have more because the bank gave you more money. But what that tells me is the next go round, it's going to be even better for you, okay. and the one after that, even better for you. So let's play that scenario out. So think about it. End of five years, you've made your twenty-five thousand dollar purchase, right? Now you're ready to again. You, you you have twenty-five thousand back in your bucket. Sure. So you're going to do another twenty-five thousand, another twenty, and you're going to do the same scenario. And every time but you, you've left the 30000 in there. The, well, the, so, it never stops growing. Right. So, yeah, I, I think so, I see where you're going. Every time you do this process, you choose to give away. The fee that you get charged is $4,000 to give the bank. So every time, $4,000, $4,000, 4000 right? Right, but that's a lot less than I'd be paying a bank anyways. But Think about it. We're going to do this for 30 years. Right. Every five years, 4000 So it's going to be six So I get a new car every... Every five years, five years getting, yep. I'm getting a new car. And you give away 4000 It's six transactions over 30 years. It's six times four is 24000 right? Okay. You gave the banker $24,000. But notice what's happening, because now you see you gave them $24,000. You have six cars that you've purchased. You've done exactly what you wanted to do in life. They gave you back $57,837,000. So you doubled your, I mean, you doubled your, your money, you got more profit than cost. In this case, yeah. I mean, you and have, you, you got six cars. You have your six cars, your purchases. You're going right. to make the purchases anyway. Right. You gave away $24,000 in the process. I recognize that. You gave away $24,000, but they gave you back $58,000. If right. I said, Patrick, give me $24,000, I'll give you back $58,000, would you do that? All day long. How, how many times would you like to do that? <laughs> how, many, how many different purchases would you like to make through the system? I see. This is the system. This is, um, it's called the private reserve strategy. This is a trademark term that I, I'm affiliated with a group of people called Personal Economics Group. They were my advisors mm -hmm. when I became a client six years ago. Mm -hmm. I continue to affiliate with these folks because they are part of the network of, there's a network of professionals around the country that teach these principles. And it's a, the private reserve strategy really is a strategy, and it, you can read the language here, but it's this whole idea that you are going to be accumulating increasing amounts of pools of capital that you need to access. Mm -hmm. And if you can get uninterrupted compounding on those pools of capital that you're building, 
over and over and over again without losing the growth on those that uninterrupted, but you're going to have to collateralize against them. People hear the word collateral. People hear the word other people's money. People hear the word um, leverage. And, and, they, and they, we love spouting those terms off, people who like to make themselves feel better and they think they know business. And I don't, I'm just being blunt. I listen to people all day long and they say these terms and they do not know how to put them into effect for themselves. So you get them working for them instead of against them, because usually the leverage that people have is the leverage that can bite them in the backside if they're not careful along the way. They become over leveraged. They borrow so much of other people's money, which is a business practice to borrow other people's money. That's fine, it might make sense. My job is to help them understand, when do you want to leverage against yourself? When is it, is it safer? When is it smarter? When is it strategically more and economically more feasible? And when do you want to leverage against someone else's money, but within the context of the whole system? One of the things that I, I neglected to mention is that you mentioned that you're a part of an organization that's national in scope. But aren't you like number two or something like that? I mean, you're way up there on the totem pole yeah. as far as producers for the company because yeah. you have a servant's heart with every person that you've um, that you've worked with, including our family and, and others that I've seen you work with. So yeah. commend, I commend you on Thank that. You. And I, I encourage you if, you're, if you if you have the opportunity to visit with Cassandra, do it. If m some of the stuff is actually clicking and you're going, wow, you're talking about something that could last four or 500 years, so to speak. And I know that a lot of people don't think that long, but the uber wealthy do. They do it all day long. You need to connect with Cassandra as quickly as possible. I know that our information is across the screen and, and you want to make sure that, well, that if you have that as your vision, that you connect to her right away. And I know, Cassandra, we've, we want to make sure that we complete everything that you wanted to get out. What else did you want to make sure that people understood from this presentation today? And you actually kind of touched upon it a little bit, the whole servant's heart. I make a, people have asked me, because I am nationally ranked, so I do have people literally kind of writing me from around the country or even different folks locally wanting to work with me saying, how, do you, how did you get there? And this is a statement I make to everybody. There are seven billion people in the world. Right. Somebody's gonna work with me, right? right? Indeed, I, I, um, this presentation is because I would love somebody to call me, right? Sure. But I don't know if there's another reason why that person might be reaching out to me. I don't know always, even though my desire may be, and we're, we're talking business, and that's the reason, an excuse for us to talk. This sure. is an excuse for me. I, I get to help people with their money. I get to help people bring them true economic freedom. Right. I don't care whether it's $100 a month or a million dollars a year. And I have clients that contribute $100 a month. I have clients that contribute $100, a million dollars a year. I have all in between there. So it right. doesn't matter. However I can help people, that, I don't know what that transaction, that, that interaction is going to be like. And so I really am serious about that. I meet people because of business, and I deliver the story. The story, this is brilliant. We love these contracts. We love this process. I'm thrilled I participate in it, that my son gets to participate yeah, in it. Yeah, you were like the, 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 the bad hair guy, weren't I you? I am, yeah. I'm yeah, the, the hair club for yeah, men. Yeah, I'm the hair club for men, yeah, right? Yeah, you, you, um, I'm a client. You, were, you first started as a client. Absolutely. And now you. Absolutely. Look at all my hair. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Look at how long it, it is. Um, indeed, indeed, yeah. <laughs> and so um, it's. It is, I guess what I, it is more than just the product, right. you know? It is more than just even the system. It is more than the club. My desire for people is to let me be your swing coach. And, right. and I am real serious about this. Not everyone's gonna like my personality. Not everyone's gonna like my style. And they're not gonna wanna work with me. I have other colleagues I work with. So call me. If we connect, I can absolutely unequivocally guaranteed improve your financial situation. Promise. If they follow what you no, I can't. I can't make them do it. Yeah. Let me be real clear. I can't make you do it. But if you choose to do this, absolutely you'll be better off. But if you don't like me, but you still like the information, I have colleagues I work with that, that will happily, you'll get along better with them. Right. Different colors, different ages, different sizes. What do you want? Yeah. I really am okay. So. Well, I, I know that as we, as we kind of wrap up this, this one, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, what would you like people to do right now? They should look at, they should go check me out on my website is what they should do right now. Yeah. Um, honestly, I mean, reach out, you know, let's talk, let's grab a coffee. If you live in a different state, 
let's get on the phone, let's do a webinar. I mean, be honest. You know, call me and be honest. Yeah. You know, don't, don't, I, don't try and impress me and don't, you know, try to be depressed. Right. <laughs> it's not depressing. This is fun. This is fun. Right. It's a lot of fun. But you, but you do a lot of training with them. You're going you're gonna to give them the instruction they need if they're willing to take the steps. Yes. I mean, one of the things that I realize is that there's only about 15% of any audience that will actually do something with what you give them. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about the, the things that we're talking about here, yeah, there's about 15% of the audience that probably be able to not only get it, but maybe do something with it. Yeah. Those people should call. If you're an implementer, you should call her and then really just get to know what she's talking about because once you understand the, I want to say fitness financial fitness, system. Fitness professional for finances. See? Sure, yeah. Fitness professional for finances. I'll make you sexy. I, well, <laughs> <laughs> believe me, I know a lot of people are <laughs> saying, Pat, you need a lot of that. So. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, is that you can really help them. Yeah. Um, they can call you. They can go to your website. I know that information's on the yeah. screen too. Um, you do a lot of speaking. They could, you would be willing to speak Absolutely. at their, their, what conference or association? There, you know, people have different clubs that they belong to, and it's not. This is definitely one area we talk about because these are wealth principles and wealth truths that people, they're always, their mind is blown by this. That like, I don't have a purchasing strategy, and I don't mean being good with your budget. I mean a strategy that actually realizes growth on purchases. This is something sure we can talk about, but there's also more that I speak to about what, because there are behaviors behind all of this. Uh, most of my clients start to refer to me as their um, life coach, um, their wealth counselor. Um, a lot of it is about, it's again, it's money is not math, money is human behavior. I'm a now, social scientist. I want you to say that one more time because that's a real critical mm -hmm. statement. Mm -hmm. Money is what? Money is not math, money is human behavior. So whatever comes into you and goes from you, you have the control over. Yes. And it's an illustration of your own internal kind of mm, system. Yes, yes. And you give them a system that works. Yes. yes. Wow. I love this stuff. This is Pat Dewar. Business Spotlight is uh, really designed for business owners to tell their story and get it into the marketplace. If, you're, if you found this interesting, by all means, connect with Cassandra as quickly as possible. Get her on the phone, talk to her, and find out if it really resonates with you, uh, what she's saying. What her heart is, is to do you good. And I know that because she's my wealth coach. And I'm so thankful for all that she's done for me and my family. And I encourage you to connect with her right away. The Business Spotlight, we're here every, every week, 930. We're also all over the internet. We'll talk to you all next time. Thanks.